I have this blank page staring at me. <laughs> so to help me get started, I'm consulting Meg's Junk Journal July prompt list. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. If you have never heard of Junk Journal July, it's a fun collaboration Meg from Meg Journals hosts twice a year, once for Junk Journal January and once for Junk Journal July. She always organizes a collaboration to kickstart the month, and I'm happy to have been part of that for a few times now. You can find the playlist of all the fabulous contributions linked below in case you missed any of that. You can see Meg's Junk Journal July prompt list here on the screen right now. And today is July 29th, and the prompt is geometric. So geometric means characterized or decorated with regular lines and shapes. So that's what I want to do. By the way, if you're wondering what journal I'm working in, this is my current planner, my three month planner. If you want to know more about this planner, please check the link below for my plan with me videos. So I have this beautiful box and in it I collect book parts, most of which are parts of old vintage book spines. So when you take apart a book because you want to use the cover to make a junk journal, you can also take apart the block of pages and then if you're lucky you can get beautiful pieces off like this by just pulling this off the spine a lot of times you're not going to get full pieces like this but rather bits are going to come off but even these are awesome for collages so i want to use some of these as a background for a collage today which is going to be my geometric element and to glue it all down i'm going to use heavy gel medium this one is unfortunately glossy. That was a mistake while buying, but I'm going to cover it up anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to start with some of the flatter pieces like this one. It has just the perfect size. I also love the texture that this adds to a collage. It's a bit too long. Maybe here. I have no plan for this. I have no idea what my next layer is going to be. I am, as usual, thinking in baby steps. That prevents overwhelm for me. Because otherwise, sometimes I think I would never start if I think I need to have a clear picture of what the end result will look like. And I don't then I think that would totally stress me. This gel medium is great. It really holds down well more dimensional pieces. This netting is just awesome. So I'm just making a geometric pattern with these geometric pieces. This one is a bit more dimensional because it has some of the book pages still stuck to it. Oh, this is beautiful. I could imagine a collage just with these pieces, nothing else. Maybe that's what this is going to be. Because it's kind of a shame to cover these up. Oh, this is so yummy. I can't even... I'm not thinking a lot about this. I'm just putting it on. Oh, beautiful. I think you can't really go wrong. What I personally would not like the look of is just to put them like any which way, uh, crossing them over and having a diagonal. That would not work for me, I know that. But maybe that's something you would enjoy. So what's so great is that everybody has their own taste and their own vision and preferences. 
That's what makes us all unique. I don't want to get too, too bulky. I mean, this planner definitely still has some room to grow, but I do want to be mindful, especially here where the spine is. I don't want to go too dimensional here. Oh, look how gorgeous. I'm in love with these pieces. like the straight edge so I'm trying to destroy that a little bit yes oh I love it this would also actually be really nice in a frame on the wall oh I would love that I need to do that like not putting a glass or anything over it you know just having the frame what I should probably also mention is that, of course, you can find Meg's Junk Journal July prompt list linked below for you to download. And if you want to participate as well, why not share it on social media, either on Instagram or here on YouTube, by adding the hashtag Junk Journal July so that others can find your video or post easily. Once this is dry, I'm going to cover this with some transparent gesso which is matte because at the moment this is quite glossy and i don't want that and this should also help the page be more sturdy because i might just add some more wet media so this will help the page Once this is dry, this is now completely matte, which makes me very happy. <laughs> and I'm going to add some texture paste opaque crackle from Ranger, just in some places. I'm going to use my narrow spatula for this. Again, I'm just kind of doing this intuitively, trying not to overthink this. Not always easy. Okay, I think that's good. I'm going to let this air dry now. The effect is a bit differently when you air dry it rather than using a heat gun. So while that dries, I do want to look at potential focal points. And you can already see some of the crackling that has started here. Super cool. I was looking through these two books and I found three images that would potentially work for this collage, in my opinion. One I had already apparently cut out for a different project and then I never used him. Let me show you the ISBN number in case you want to look this up. Maybe you can find it on eBay. So there's that information. Here's the ISBN number. And the other two I found were from this book here. I found both of these books at my Goodwill. Oh, look, I've never seen that before. Oh, I love it. It's so great when you find these things in books. <laughs> so this is the information for the other book. This is a whole series. There's other books that go with these. So one of the images I was considering is this guy right here. And the second one is uh, either of these two, although I think I want this one. I think I want them facing that way but i will have to test that so i will cut all these four images out and then we can play with those later so this is dried beautifully i am so in love with this i'm almost tempted to like only put one word here one typed word with my vintage typewriter and leaving it as it is because it's gorgeous and i think i might actually do that if i were to hang this on the wall into in a frame but since this is in my journal, I think I do want to add the focal point. So these are the two smaller ones that I cut out. So this is one. 
and this is the other but the issue i had with both of these is that this part here on the background is almost too overpowering for this little bird the colors would have been beautiful together and also the bird itself it was just a little bit bigger i think that would be a great solution either of these would be gorgeous but i just think this is too much like the bird is kind of being drowned by everything that's going on around him and we have this blue one which is definitely bigger would actually be an option and the other option is way bigger that's this guy here i can really only put him here because of how bulky this is i cannot really put him on top of that i mean yes of course i could add some foam stickers to the back to make it more dimensional but this is so high it's really super dimensional that I think not even the foam stickers would be enough. And beside that, I think he probably would be covering up too much of the goodness. So he could go right there. He's definitely big enough. I'm wondering, is he too big? Because I really also kind of like this one. This one, of course, looks great because of the colors. He pops out more, but if i would add him i would of course add some more dark elements on the background to make him stick out more so that's not the issue the issue is more the size is he too big for this page i almost like him better and of course he goes beautifully with the end papers of my planner i recently purchased this fabulous die it's from hero arts I got it in an Austrian online shop, which I will link below. I will also link the Hero Arts website for you below. And I tried this die for the first time and I tried it on some black cardstock. It's absolutely gorgeous. It gives this impression of a like a wired fence. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm thinking to not use the whole piece, but to maybe use a part of it. But I think this is too stark. So I want to tone that down a little bit and I want to try that with some, or actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to first paint this with gesso. Or I could just do the whole thing in white. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to, <laughs> rather than painting this white now, because I will probably be using this in another collage somewhere, I'm going to use this again on some white cardstock and then I think I'll spray over it with my frayed burlap and then we'll see how that looks behind him. I think these little pieces would also be fun to use in a collage. So we ha here we have the fence in white. I'm going to spray this through here, kind of using it as a stencil as well. This is what it looks like when it's dry. I love the color. So I'm not going to use the whole thing, but I think this color now is beautiful behind him. Yeah, the black was just too much. Or do I just leave the whole thing? I could leave the whole thing. Maybe just take the bottom off here where it gets two dimensional. I'm also happy how this now plays together. We have the positive and the negative of that design. I want to add a bit more interest around here. So I'm going to again use my distress stain and I'll just spray it here and let that drip for some more contrast. And since I don't want to waste the rest that's on here, I'm just going to smoosh that here. I think I'm going to spritz some water here as well. It looks like chocolate now. <laughs> Maybe that's a bit too much. So I'll dab some of that away. 
I know the whole point was to have a bigger contrast, but I can always add that with some splatters later. The color of his wing is inspiring me to also add a bit of rusty hinge. I don't have that in a spray, so I'm just smooshing that onto my acrylic block, adding some water. And I don't want a lot of this. I just want a little bit here and a little bit here in the corner. Again, I'll just smoosh the rest on this page. And I will just spritz a little bit here. Actually, I think I also want some there. Now that this has dried, it is very, very subtle. Here we can see it the most. Here it has mixed with the frayed burlap. We can see it very faintly down here and a little bit up here. But I love how grungy this whole background is becoming. But now I'm wondering about this because if we put it like I originally had planned like this, I mean, it would work. It's subtle. I kind of like that it's subtle, but what if we now turn it around and use the white side? I kind of like that contrast too. He definitely pops more on that background, doesn't he? And I also wonder what it would look like if we would actually add some of these pieces. Maybe up here. And maybe down here some more. Then I also found these orange feathers. In order for them not to be overpowering, I think just this bottom fluffy part might be cute underneath the bird so that it just peeks out. So I want to try that as well. <laughs> that almost looks like he has a furry tummy. <laughs> Maybe we should actually see that it's a feather. Maybe just one or maybe down here, like an extension of his tail. Not extension, addition. This? No, that's also weird. <laughs> I just had another crazy idea. So I made another one of these and I'm going to add my fluorescent orange onto that. And then we're going to see how that looks behind him for contrast. I actually like this back side better, which is not so perfectly painted because there it kind of looks like it has chipped off already, which is really cool. So let's change this. Wow, is that too much? Maybe it needs to be a little less. I mean, the contrast is amazing. I love the pop of color. Maybe let's just tear it down a bit. Do these now need to be orange as well? Yeah, one thing always leads to the other, right? <laughs> See, that doesn't work because it creates a line. That's not good. Maybe this is still a bit too much. Isn't it amazing how when I put this here, automatically it pulls your eye there because it now makes the whole thing one. What if we combine the best of both of these ideas? Because I love this so much as well, but I do love the pop of color. So why not use this and add a little bit of the frayed burlap distressed oxide to parts of it? I'll just spray some here and then apply that with a paintbrush. And since that doesn't look grungy enough to me yet, I want to also add some transparent gesso. And 
and some very fine grained white sand. So I'm kind of making a clear texture paste. A little bit more. This is a beautiful grainy paste now. And I want to add this on some parts here. And then I will add some more Distress Oxide, I think, or paint. We'll see. This is not so easy. <laughs> it's falling off. But some will stay, I'm sure. I have to concentrate more on the edges because the bird will be in the middle anyway. And I'll just add some of the leftover paste here. Or here, maybe I'll do it here. This is what it looks like once it has dried. And now I'm just going to take my rusty hinge and carefully go over those bits to make it look like rust. It looks kind of cool. That was definitely too clean looking before. Now we have a little bit color, but we still also have the grunge. I am liking this. And then I'd like to add another type of texture. I was thinking one of these two. This one is from some organic potatoes from the supermarket. And I didn't dye it, it came like this. And this is just a coffee dyed piece of cheesecloth. This of course provides a lot more contrast, maybe too much. This here will pretty much disappear except for the texture. So I think I'll try this one first. I want it looking all tattered. And then put it here. Basically that could be his nest. I'm liking that one a lot, I think, better than this. Yeah, this is too too dark for me. I want to try this feather one more time now with the nest. Maybe that makes a difference. No, it's still not working. I'm ready to stick this down using my matte gel for this. I have this one from Liquitex, which I'm super happy with. I might need to secure that for a while. This gel dries matte, so I'm not worried about putting it on top. I just hope that this will stick. And then I'll add the cheesecloth. And then I added some foam tape on the back of the bird with some glue. And I'll just place that here. And then I'm going to try some neon splatters. I'm just covering his face. So I have this same orange that I had in the acrylic. I have as a fluid acrylic or acrylic ink. I'm just going to put some here and see if I can splatter this. I've never tried this before might need some water but i don't really want to dilute any of this oh this is beautiful i love it let's add some here as well oh this is gorgeous let me show you a close-up isn't that just a beautiful pop of color i love it we have it here and I will also add some white splatters. I have some watered down white gesso because this was drying up. So I just added some water. Once these have dried, I want to add a quote up here with my pencil.
I'm aware that this is really hard to read, but I'm totally okay with that. It says, hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. From Langston Hughes. And I'm going to call this done. And I am seriously considering, once that July is almost over anyway, that I will tear this page out of my planner. I'm done with this page anyway because I am yeah, I'm really considering framing this one or I'll make another one. I will have to think about that. So let me show you a close up of all the goodness. There is so much yumminess here. Love it. Mwah, mwah. <laughs>